sun rises behind her eyes, but she still can't see it. And she's beside me. I walk slowly. She feeds my soul all the gold I could need. This whole time I've been searching for the wrong thing. She's my captain. She's the sea. She's the sun on my back, baby. Leave me. She's my captain. She's the sea. She's the sun on my back, baby. Leave me. Uh, she, she literally still calls and tells me if she's going to join me. Found my heart in my mind, fighting for my bones. And I'll never have to break the cold. Oh, <laughs> She's the kind you want to find in a story. I've never had anybody fight for me. She's my captain. She's the sea. She's the sun on my back, baby. She's my captain. She's the sea. She's the sun on my back, baby. Even looking for 
on behalf of Trans and Alicia for celebrating with them today. We're together at this place and this time to celebrate with Trent and Alicia the completeness of their love. The book of faith by which we as believers in Jesus Christ live tells us that marriage is an honored event. For the reason of love, a man and a woman shall leave the home of their birth to share in the love and trust of a home of their own. The Apostle Paul tells us that there are many events and different feelings in life, but three are eternal, faith, hope, and love. But the love that is of God and from God is the greatest of them all. And without the love of God, we would be empty people and lack the power to face life and its problems. And nor would we have any real hope for tomorrow. Who gives this woman to be married unto this man? Her mother and I do. Let's bow our heads, please, and ask God to bless this special day for this special coming. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day you've given us. Father, we thank you for this special day that is to Trent and Alicia and their families. Father, we thank you for them. We thank you for bringing them together. We ask you to bless this service and bless this day and bless their life ahead. And we thank you for eternal life in Jesus. In his name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Yes. Would you hold hands, please? We're grateful today that you have joined us. As I said, we're grateful for the church, which cares enough about the things that are sacred, those things that are basic, to provide an atmosphere where a man and a woman can commit their lives together in the company of, of witnesses and to publicly proclaim their love to one another. And so knowing that the importance of this event, we are grateful that you're here today and for their service. As I said, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in uh, the Bible about love, and one of the main places he wrote, of course, was 1 Corinthians 13, known as the love chapter. And love is a word that contains so much impact during Alicia, we're hard put to define it. Someone has said that love wants to give, and because it does, its primary goal is to make the other person happy. It's a desire to please the partner. It's a passionate and abiding desire on the part of two persons to produce together and yet spontaneously express their individuality in the context of marriage. Love is the soil and climate in which each can flourish, far superior to what either of you can achieve alone. But as good as these definitions are, perhaps none have achieved the beauty and majesty of the Apostle Paul's story description of God's kind of love found in 1 Corinthians 13. Here he writes, love is patient and love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. But now by faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And Trent, at least the kind of homes we need most today are those where two lives are being drawn together by a holy love greater than their own. And if your commitment has these dimensions, then your love truly will go on forever. Now, Alicia, <laughs> these thick and bind ladies are known to be good cooks. <laughs> <laughs> and you might want to ask them for some of their recipes. <laughs> okay, good. Any recipe has certain ingredients. And just like a marriage, need certain ingredients. And the first ingredient I would advise is one of present, of present. Presents are always important to commemorate special occasions. Trent, you better not forget her birthday, or today, or Christmas, maybe even Groundhog Day, just to make sure. Seriously, don't neglect uh, the giving of presents to each other, but don't forget the presents are more than material things. The giving of yourself, your personhood, your time, your words like, I love you, and I'm sorry. The gift of total commitment, the gift of praying for each other, the gift of unselfishness, and the gift of desiring that together may becomes all that he or she is capable of becoming. Now the second ingredient I would advise is that of purpose. Everyone needs a purpose. Every couple needs a purpose. Marriage is not two people standing uh, eye to eye, but shoulder to shoulder, looking to similar goals. 
Now, competition is good in many areas of life and not in the marriage. By meaningful worship, prayer, and a lot of communication, you'll discover God's purposes for your life and your home. And then the third ingredient, final ingredient, I would suggest is that of power. The power is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. The word home is one nation means, in one nation it means a shrine of God. In the Christian life, it means a place where Jesus Christ is Lord. So I would encourage you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Now you, Trent, and you, Alicia, have asked me to formally unite you in marriage and be assured that no legal, moral, or religious barriers hinder this proper union, I ask. Do you, Trent, in taking this woman to be your lawful and wedded wife, promise to love and to cherish her, to honor and sustain her, in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, in the bad that may darken your days, in the good that may lighten your ways, and to be true to her in all things, till death alone shall part you. And you, Alicia, in taking this man to be your lawful and wedded husband, promise to love and to cherish him, to honor and sustain him, in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, in the bad that may darken your days, in the good that may lighten your ways, and to be true to him in all things, till death alone shall part you. I do. Right. Trent, you have a ring? <laughs> the rings that you're sharing today are symbols of your love and your commitment of love. They're made of gold, expressed in the purity which should always be in your marriage. They're formed in circles, expressing the unending dimension of your love and the eternal love of God. So I ask you now to share these rings in the full awareness of Christ's love in you and through you. So Trent, would you take your ring and place it upon the third finger of Alicia's left hand? Would you hold it there and repeat after me, please? Alicia, I give this ring. Alicia, I give this ring. As a visible token. As a visible token. Of my love. Of my love. And I give it to you. And I give it to you. As my own life. As my own life. Alicia, do you have a ring? Oh, uh, I think I forgot. <laughs> take the ring, place it upon the third finger of Trent's left hand, and hold it there and repeat after me. Trent, I give this ring. Trent, I give this ring. As a visible token. As a visible token. Of my love. Of my love. And I give it to you. And I give it to you. As my own life. As my own life. <laughs> <laughs> now they're gonna tie the unity braid and find the Union today. Sometimes we're all in water, I wouldn't have it any other way. And if I'm being honest, your first and my last name, we'll just sound better together. And probably always will, like a cup of coffee in the sunrise, Sunday drives and times to kill. What's the point of this on guitar? If it ain't got no strength, or pulling your heart into a song that you ain't no saint. It's a match made up in heaven, like good old boys and bees. of testimony as commitment as to your love one for another. I, by the authority of this state and by the commission of God in Christ as a minister of the gospel, declare and proclaim that you, Trent, and you, Alicia, are husband and wife. For God is joined together, let no man put asunder. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Trent, I think it's time to kiss the bride.
time, Trip and Alicia singing by. And, uh, Enjoy one another's company. We thank you for uh, the food and the fellowship tonight, God. We ask your blessing upon you. We thank you for Trent and Alicia and their families and for this time together. And we thank you so much for eternal life in Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.
crazy to think about us being so about us both being married and being so grown up and it felt like we were just having our late night jumps on the trampoline and frosting fights and many many food trips although those days are behind us i'm so excited for the future to see you and trent grow as a married couple trent i couldn't ask for a better man for my best friend you are the man of her dreams and she and she deserves the world and i and i know you will give it give her that and for that i'm thankful thank you for showing her how to be loved. Leisha Lou, you are one of the strongest women I know. You are gorgeous, hilarious, fun, loving, out and outgoing. You have a one in a million personality. Thank you for being there when I need you through good and bad times. Thank you for being the greatest best friend a girl could ask for. Thank you for all the laughs and the, and the and especially the laughs that end in tears. I'm so proud of the person you have become and will become. I love you both and I hope you live your life without any expectations. Now as I wrap this speech up, I wanted to congratulate the happy couple and also make a toast. May you two continue working cows together and live happily. All right, we'll now have the best man speech. Good evening, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Dylan Ziegenbein, I'm Trent's first cousin. Uh, Selected best man, even though the, the crowd I was chose out of wasn't too tough to begin with. First of all, on behalf of the bride and groom, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight on this incredibly hot and humid day to celebrate for everybody. However, I was told that the length of the best man's speech should be no longer than the groom laughs in bed, so I thank you all. Good night. All jokes aside, there is one Ziggenbein that couldn't be here tonight, and that's Gary. Trent, I know Gary would be so proud of the man you became today, and I know he'd be so proud of the pride that you found on this beautiful July afternoon. I've known Trent my whole life, and most of you know, Trent's a good old boy from Richland, Missouri, who loves a farm, loves his friends, and loves his family. Trent's worked so hard to obtain the farm he's had today, and the house, and obtain Alicia, and one thing I can tell you that Trent loves more than all of that is Alicia. <laughs> I've also known Alicia for quite some time. Back in the day, we used to spend plenty of afternoons at the Fagris house all summer long. Plenty of things I learned about Alicia throughout those long, hot summers. 
Alicia's horrified of the dark. <laughs> Alicia does not like the heat. And Alicia cooks a mean freezer pizza. However, her cooking still stops there. I was doing a little bit of online research about how to go about a best man speech. And I thought the best way to put it was, I'd like to ask Alicia to set her right hand flat on the table in front of you. Yes. Trent, go ahead and put your hand on top of hers. According to the internet, this is now the last time you'll ever have the upper hand. I know these two are going to enjoy their lives to the fullest, but while I was also doing a little bit of digging, I couldn't necessarily find a toast that would fit these two that great, so I had to come up with my own. Cheers to many years, very few tears, a lot of miles with even more smiles. Cheers to late nights on the farm with very few fights. Here's to yours and mine's, and here's to the zigging vines.